Now I made a little mess right here with the refrigerant that came out or the oil from the lines. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it off as best as I can. It's not gonna stain like oil normally does, but still, I would just like to get rid of it as quick as possible. Now, as far as the ground right here, and this one grounds the intake and the ECU and connections that are to the uh, engine, to the chassis. I tried trimming it down a little bit and it just snaps right off. And just to quick and give you guys an example of what I did, I grabbed the razor blade. So like I'm gonna go trim it a little bit around. Watch when I pull it out, it snaps like powder. This thing is like mega corroded, so I'm gonna have to buy a new uh, new grounds and I'm gonna go ahead and replace these. I would recommend you guys do not buy these. Some cheap eBay or Amazon ones. And they sounded good because originally I had ground issues, so I replaced them all with those, but now you know, do not use these. Now as far as the pop-up being broken, it's the little bushing in this linkage arm, and you can see it's broken there and there's little pieces on there this is one that i designed so i'm gonna go ahead and test the worst case i'll just go buy new ones but designed there's a couple prototypes after so we're gonna try to just push it on there then we'll put it on i'll go get that so you guys can see a little more of that linkage mechanism so normally this we're going this little ball and when that motor spins causes the pop-up to go up and down so let's go ahead and try to pop this old one off and replace it with a new one yep pop that easily get the new one hopefully it fits first go fits perfectly now let's put it on there might take some force Overall fitment's a little bit too tight, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the Dremel. Try to widen it a little bit, as well as that interior. So I cut into it. So I cut into it just a little bit. Cut some of the interior out. So let's go ahead and try it on now. Still a little bit too big, so let's go ahead and widen it out. And just like that, it's on there. So now, I'm pretty curious to see how this will last as a temporary solution until I feel like buying the real thing. So, let's see. I mean, it fits. It's not wobbly on that side. I'm just a little worried that the linkage might pop out. But it's good. And there we go. Pop-up is now fixed be able to go up when I turn the car on but for now I'm gonna go ahead and put the overflow tank right back where it's supposed to go let's do it now that I've gone ahead and taken out all the AC components that I need to at least for this uh, refresher I'm gonna go ahead and take out the evaporator core evaporator core from inside the dash so let's do it now to take off the dash or not the dash now to access the evaporator core we're going to take out the glove box for that two phillips 10 on the bottom let's go ahead and do those now we took out those two and the glove box came right out now all that's left is that black box which is just evaporator core we're going to go ahead and get that out it's got 10 millimeter bolts i think two on top or on the side as well as the clamp that connects to the, the fan box so let's go ahead and take it off now it has one bolt on the bottom and one on top i'd recommend using one of these for the top one the bottom one it doesn't really matter i use that with the extension but you're gonna need something tight because it's up there inside the dash so you're gonna have to take it out with this after taking out the following brackets as well as the two nuts holding it from up top and down there and since i didn't have the mount for the heater core box i had me one out of tape last time i restored it but after that, it's just quickly pulled out. Then I have it right here. So this one I had cleaned up, restored. Um, still looks a bit dirty, but I have all brand new internals going in. So that's pretty much us done with the removal. 
and now we're gonna go ahead and go cleaning. While I'm in there, before I put that on again, I was thinking I'm, I built this a while ago, which is just a regular flapper box from a junkyard a while ago when I, my car was totaled. And I had gutted it because since I really don't rock any flaps, but I still have AC, I just care about controlling the temperature. Then this is all I, all I need really. Now a lot has happened and the reason is I had built this a while ago. It's a AC flapper box that I cut out all the flaps since I really only use the, the I can only control the speed of the fan that blows in after the EVAP box into here straight into the vents because I don't really care about any of the controls it's just max air or whatever I set it to and AC on or off and now we're going to go ahead and take the old one out which means I have to pull the dash and we'll put this one back on luckily the center console came out really easily now for the tombstone that's a quick release it's out so let's continue I got to unbolt here unbolt there and then we're gonna we might have to pull the gauge cluster and then we'll be able to just fully pull it out very quickly I'm gonna have to fix that. No, with the gauge cluster, I have to be really careful because there's a ton of stuff wired up to it. Right, here we go. It's not the prettiest, but this is what the back of the gauge closer looked like. You can see here I have the connectors for the gauges, as well as I have the AFR here on the left. And I have to cut all around the original wiring to get it to work. Yeah, I might take this chance and opportunity to just kind of quickly polish this up. I might sand it, clear coat it. So now, let's continue moving with the uh, dash removal as that's the focus right now, so we can get to the AC air box. And just like that, hold the ashes loose, and go ahead and pull it out towards us. Just a little bit, just enough to get me access to that box over there. Yeah, and I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm pretty sure I've just fully messed up my interior. Fully took it apart. Um, still have to remove the dash, I might have to drop the steering column a bit to pull it out a little more. But I'm gonna go ahead and in the meantime, try to take out the air box and i hope that does it and i don't have to fully pull out the dash because that's going to be a problem i'm going to have to take out the shifter and everything too if i have to do that so let's go ahead and do this now one last thing before we wrap up here guys is i do want to thank my good friend songbird miata and his youtube channel also doing a build similar to mine full restoration he's got a sick build where he's going detail by detail i recommend you guys check it out he's very knowledgeable in that stuff so I'll go ahead and link them in the description and I'll go ahead and catch you guys in the next one.